First question, Second. very simple. For you, which are today the most disruptive technologies, and how are those technologies improving our quality of life and businesses? Disruptive disruption is a is a widely deployed term, mm -hmm. often deployed in, you know improperly or or or, or without precision. Um, disruption, in essence, to me is is being um, uh, forced to deal with possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, most most it's, you know the theory of Osram's razor tends to govern most people. Uh, um, the larger the organization, the more you're going to pick the risk-averse uh, direction. Um, but disruption is when it's so clear mm -hmm. that you can't not act. And to me, the, the most interesting disruptive technology is the technology of data. So you might say, well, that's not technology. Well, it is because it's a human creation. Mm -hmm. There was a creation called zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. And if you start back then and you trace to today, what you find is there is something we've been creating without even understanding what its value is. Right. And it's only now that there's the clarity of, uh, of activity such that you can take this byproduct of our, of our activity and put it to work. That's disruptive. I mean, and it's now disrupting the, the impossibility of avoiding data powered activity. I, um, I observe firsthand it powering global industry. Mm -hmm. I observe firsthand uh, through Tempest it materially affecting treatment of uh, medical treatment. Um, I, I'm not sure any any industry uh, any leader can avoid the the necessity to use more data and act more precisely. Right. And so which. Industries have you seen most impact from new technologies in the last three to five years? Which ones are dramatically changing? Well, uh, I'm not sure there's a, a global infrastructure space, um, a global heavy industry space that's not impacted by uh, data influenced. Operate, operations or decision making. Um, th where it's been most impactful, I would propose, um, is in the world of, well, where it's most impactful is in the world of, uh, of reliability, which is not a particular space, it's a particular activity. Yeah. Um, how do we think about reliability? Do we react when something breaks or do we proact before something happens? The reliability of safety and national security it right. means data needs to be harnessed before there's a problem. Mm -hmm. The reliability of a plane um, leaving and landing on time yeah. uh, is just as deeply influenced as is the reliability of global logistics and global transit. All mm -hmm. of these things, without you, without the average person understanding, leaders are now faced with this, um, you know, quiet. Uh, Quietly present, pretty uh, pervasive necessity um, where nobody's yelling at them to do it. Yet, I think inside they're realizing if they don't do it, uh, they're putting their companies and, and and their activity at risk. Right, right. And so, where would you say, for example, predictive analytics is something that Uptake does, right? That's Correct. The, that's the core of Uptake. Mm -hmm. So. Where have you seen predictive analytics? And in, in, in that's what I want to see. Oh, which I mean, I'll give you like in, in the power industry. Right. So in power, mm -hmm. which is the production, transmission, distribution of yeah. power, every element of that, what they call uh, T and D, and you know the entire chain of power creation and distribution is now more dictated in activity by data, yeah. predictive data enhanced predictive insight. Based operations mm -hmm. than it is about reactive. Right. Um, same with oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Those are two industries where, on a relative basis, where things were versus where things are radically different. Mm -hmm. And the choice of how to do something is almost um, universally thought of differently today than it was five years ago. It's not about what an ERP system or some legacy technology system might tell you to do. Mm -hmm. That is not okay anymore. It's about what is happening such that we can optimize what we're doing. Right. Um, the other area I'd say is the general well, aviation, uh -huh. certainly 
but the activity of MRO, which is maintenance, repair, and, mm -hmm. and operations, mm -hmm. MRO is its own category, I would propose, in industry. The MRO activity of uh, aviation, of locomotives in the train industry, and of sort of uh, moving assets, uh, the, uh, the necessity to maintain them with parts and services, all of that activity is now heavily, heavily sort of um, governed and operated through predictive insight versus, you know, human-entered, mm -hmm. reactive, um, organizing uh, activity. I mean, the other reflection is for 50 years, technology has served one purpose. Mm -hmm. People enter information, and then we organize people. Yeah. So, like, the old, you know, the, the, the assembly line, mm -hmm. if, that's, if that's industry 1.0, Industrial Revolution 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0 were simply about organizing people, shuffling people around to stand in the right place, do the right thing in relationship to a machine versus taking data out of the machine and out of every other possible place and not just optimizing a, pe a person, but optimizing the machine, op optimizing the activity and in essence saying, let's measure ourselves against possible mm -hmm. versus previous. Right. Um, let's use everything that can be possible as our governor of what we could do versus let's just improve a little bit over what we used to do. That's a big thematic, mm -hmm. like philosophical difference, and it's very strategic. It's, you know, it challenges Deming right. or it challenges the goal. You guys read the goal? No. The goal is this iconic, you know, uh, strategy book. It's a, it's a story, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a philosophy of um, business strategy for manufacturing told through a story about Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. but it's a classic. Okay. So it's not like a kid's story. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's taught in business schools. Mm -hmm. But it's really about that is about organizing based upon the weakest link mm -hmm. and focusing not on the best person but on how to optimize the worst. Mm -hmm. Right. Like economies, if you don't work on the bottom layer, uh, the upper layer will always have a ceiling. Exactly. And that's... And, and that's, and that's yeah, like yeah. emblematic of... That 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 has been state of the art, mm -hmm. let's say, for the last 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. because that's about the best we had as humans is like, let's figure out how to be organized and what to focus on versus let's know everything mm -hmm. so that what we do is not sort of wrote on the worst or the best. It's simply in relationship to the objective. Mm -hmm. Very different way of thinking about business strategy. Right. How did you come up with the idea of this predictive analytics? Why did you want to do it? Um, how did it all happen? Why did you choose that? Um, you know, I, I guess I, I, curiosity to me is the ultimate, you know, weapon of of, uh, of mass impact mm -hmm. um, in a good way, of, mm -hmm. of mass positive impact. You know, yeah. and curiosity. Uh, the, there's a the story is um, if there was a day, the day was what, saying why why is my daughter's plane late. It was a, a maintenance issue. Mm -hmm. So the, the literal story was that 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 began a question like, why it doesn't have to be late? Mm -hmm. The part could have been there. They could have known that it was uh, that there was something wrong with the plane before it was time or we had the opportunity to, to, to fix it. And all the things that could have happened. Then the question is, why did that not happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what you find is big companies have blind spots, mm -hmm. um, natural blind spots that are inevitable. And the blind spots generally show up in terms of where there's not, where there's an acceptance of status quo and organizational construct says nobody's job is to think about how to solve it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, a matrix organization in essence says you're responsible for this. Mm -hmm. And if I don't tell you you're responsible for it, you're not responsible for it. Right. Well, who's responsible for something that doesn't fit? And that sort of reveals something that major industries we're not yet doing, which basically is acting based upon all of the available data. Mm -hmm. um, and to do what I was conceiving required some elements. It required sensors, which happen to exist and happen to be growing like you know, with Moore's Law. Sensors are getting better every year and cheaper. Mm -hmm. So that is an element in the creation of Better quality and cheaper. Yeah. So too with the cloud. Cloud's getting bigger, better, more capacity, right. cheaper every year. Mm -hmm. And right. data science is also in a state of like evolution or revolution at the time that the idea for uptake um, hit me. And then the last thing is the connectivity through 
either mobile or satellite or otherwise shows up. And all these things are showing up and, and there was nobody like me that was in the space as an entrepreneur saying, I'm going to build a platform that's neutral. Um, that doesn't serve one manufacturing machine. It serves the operator mm -hmm. and it serves the operator in their quest to be better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uptake. Thank you. I, I've asked this question to a lot of people in technology. And I'm sure you saw an interview of Elon Musk and Zuckerberg saying, you know, too much technology might put a lot of people out of work. So one of the questions that we had is, what is your vision on how fast technology is going, how it's displacing people from their jobs, and how is that going to impact our economy? Um, look, people are always going in and out of, of, of industries. Uh, um, so if you accept everything is always changing, mm -hmm. Then you'd say, well, displacement um, is, um, is has some inevitability. You know, half of our economy was farming. Mm -hmm. I think less than 100 years ago. Yeah. So a lot of people lost farming jobs. Yet look at our unemployment rate today. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two is I do not believe that in uptake's case, mm -hmm. uh, it's about either or. We're not talking about autonomous, human-free industry. Mm -hmm. We are talking about human-operated uh, industry but with the humans operating at an increased level of insight. So in our case, we are not, you know, we don't stand for um, uptake instead of people. It's uptake empowering the front line of industry to be more effective. Mm -hmm. So we're in the process of, uh, of deploying educational programs to unions, to entire unions of frontline workers um, to help educate them about how Understanding AI-oriented applications can make them better. Um, we're in the process of, of equipping buildings mm -hmm. to be better, more operationally proactive buildings to optimize for both the workers here, what to do first and why to do it first, um, and also for the owners, how, like what's the opportunity for the building to be maximum efficiency? Mm -hmm. And the last example would be wind turbines. Berkshire Hathaway mm -hmm. is one of our customers. We're prescribing, based upon operational insight, what to do at a turbine operator level to make that turbine most productive, make it make the most energy when the wind is blowing. That's just the concept of, I'm going to understand the wind, mm -hmm. I'm going to understand the asset, and understand the person, yep. so that the person, in relation to the asset and the wind, can take the right action to make it all work. That only can be done with the data that comes from all those different sources, and then the technology to tell the person, here's what to do and why. But the actor is the person. The actor is not the technology. Right. So to those who are out there afraid of losing their jobs, afraid that uh, economies uh, are going to disappear, sectors, the human factor will always have to be there. You either believe or don't believe. I mean, I'm a believer that... that the human brain, the human ingenuity is the driver. You know, the human entrepreneurship or resourcefulness mm -hmm. drives progress. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that you, there are examples like Estonia mm -hmm. uh, is a country that has embraced data science, AI, data itself as an asset, mm -hmm. and they are remarkably productive and better off because of that acknowledgement. Um, so I do think that disruption is here. Uh, as it has shown up pretty consistently every decade or so right. in, a, in, a, in a material way. This version of disruption offers a choice, which is take action to make yourself comfortable and um, capable of operating with this disruptive intelligence called AI and machine learning, or choose to doubt or avoid. Um, that's a unique opportunity. You're not fighting this macro, you know, change of industry, you're choosing whether to be part of enabled and more proactively productive industry or choosing to be fearful. Now you get into human psychology. Mm -hmm. You choose fear or do you choose curiosity? I, I choose curiosity. curiosity. Yeah. yeah. Um, so going into the future, um, technology is moving us faster every single day, right? Um, where do you see us as the world, human beings, in 10 years, 